Hi everyone, Pam here from Creative Homescaping. Today I am participating in the Fall DIY and Decor Challenge that's being hosted by the DIY Mommy. I will put links to her channel and the playlist when it's available in my description box down below. I hope you like what I've come up with for my DIY for Fall 2018. Stay tuned! So I am going to try to make these chair swags using some picks I already have on hand. I've had these for quite a few years. I've in the past used them to stick into napkins and napkin ring holders. Um, but I only have four of each kind and I have five bar stools. So I'm going to use three of this kind that has these pears on it and then two of this kind that has an apple on it. I'm also going to be using some florals that I got recently from the Dollar Tree that I've shown in a haul video and some leaves I got at that same time. And then probably some of my ribbon that I picked up at Costco. So that is what I'm going to do and I'm going to prep all of the florals, take them apart and then get started. Okay, so I have taken all of the flowers. I've pushed the leaves up closer to the top of the flower and cut all of the stems approximately the same length. I may need to trim them again. Um, but one thing I wanted to show you is on these, these are the tiny small mums. They actually have two separate leaves on most of the stems and you can twist them. So I think I'm going to twist them more to the back of the flower so that when it, this is on the swag, things will lay more flat like that. So now I'm just going to try some layouts and see how they all work together. Okay, I decided they looked a little sparse, so I'm bringing in some of these yellowy orange mums that I also picked up at the Dollar Tree. I didn't haul these. I found them a little bit later but I think I'm going to incorporate those into the picks. And in looking at the picks, I decided that I would only use the leaves on these picks because they only have a couple of little leaves down here and I'll probably put them behind, whereas this pick already has these bigger leaves on it. And so I'm probably going to just leave those leaves and then start putting some of the flowers into the arrangement like this. Then I will likely zip tie everything together. That way it'll hold it in place better while I'm working with it and putting a bow on it. So I'm going to make all of the pear ones look like this and then I will make the apple ones with two bundles of those other leaves and then the flowers. I haven't figured out exactly the arrangement of the flowers that I want to do yet on for these, but uh, maybe something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put all of those together and then I'll show you what it looks like once I have them all zip tied together. So now I finished zip tying the picks all together and you can see how they look. I put a couple on each stem just to hold them more securely in place. And I'm really with ha happy with how they look so far. And then here's the one with the pear. And now I'm going to move on to making my bows. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that all of my pipe cleaners are folded in half because that way when I go to tie them around the bow, it will be easier for me to have it perfectly in half and have an even twist. And then the next thing I'm going to do, in order to get five bows that are exactly the same, I am going to do some measurements on my ribbon and I'm going to do it on the back side and I'll probably use a sharpie um, just so I can get the measurement uh, dark enough but you could use a marking pen that is made specifically for fabric 
And the reason I'm doing this, normally if I were just making one bow, I would just twist it freehand, but I want these to be exactly the same size. So I'm gonna mark this off and I'm going to make a twisted loop bow, which is a pretty common way of doing the bow. Now, I want a center loop in my bow. So the first thing I'm going to do is mark at six inches from the end. Actually, it shows through a little bit. So I'm just gonna make a little dot there. I've changed my mind, I'm gonna do it on the front edge. And then I want to have my loops be about four to five inches. So I think I'm gonna actually make them five inches so it's a fluffier bow because this is kind of wide ribbon. So I'm going to measure the next marks and I'll do it on this side so it's a little clearer. There's my mark for the six inches. I am going to then mark every 10 inches and I'm going to do that six times because I want three loops on each side of the bow. So I'm going to do mark there at 10 and then a mark here at 10, that's two. Six, and then I want a little bit extra so that it won't get pulled out of the bow. So I'm going to do about a three inch end. That's where I'm going to cut it. Now, these marks won't show because they will be where the bow is twisted. Make sure you start your bow at the end that has the longer tail on it. You can see here's the shorter one, here's the longer one. And for the time being, I am going to leave the loop undone. And you'll see it makes it easier to maneuver the bow if you do it that way. So the first thing I'm going to do then is start twisting. And I want to, and I'm holding it in my right hand because I'm right-handed. You could do this with your left hand also and twist with your left twist with your right hand, just whichever you want. So I'm holding this in my right hand. I'm putting my thumb just above the mark, and then I'm going to twist so the wrong side is facing me with the tail, and the loops are facing the right side. And now I'm going to find my next mark here. I'm going to put that mark right next to my middle finger. I have the ribbon between my index finger and my middle finger, and then I'm going to twist right at that mark. And that is my first loop for my bow. Now I'm going to find my next 10 inch mark, which is right here. It's a little faint. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to put my, the ribbon between my index and middle finger and twist and then I'm going to grab everything between my thumb and my index finger. Okay, now I am going to make this next loop go kind of at an angle to the first one. This is how I like to do it. You could put them side by side. And this is just my favorite way. Again, find the mark, put it below my middle finger here and twist. and then fluff it up. And then I'm going to go diagonally from that. So here's the second, third loop. I'm Here's the first two loops I made. Here's the third loop. Now I'm going diagonally from that. I'm going to make the fourth loop. And then I'm going to make the fifth loop in between those, those original loops on this side. I'm going to make the fifth one go in between them. Same method. Twist. I find this makes, by alternating the, where the loop is positioned, it makes the bow fluffier. And then my very last sixth loop, I am going to twist 
And so you can see I have that little tail at the end, which is hidden by the main part of the bow. Now, I'm going to make a loop with this front part of the bow. So I'm just going to twist it around on itself, like that. There you go. Now I'm going to take my pipe cleaner that I've already pre-bent, slide it through that loop that I made, and then pull it around to the back, grab it really tightly, and then I usually twist with both hands opposite directions. So my left hand, I like to twist counterclockwise, and my right I twist counterclockwise, so they're going opposite directions of each other. And that makes the bow nice and snug, the, the pipe cleaner nice and snug against the bow. Okay, as you tighten it, it'll get a little bit, not fluff, not unfluffed, so you can fluff it back up again, like this. And there you can see you have a multi-looped bow that has some dimension to it. And then what I'm going to do is also now attach a length of ribbon so that I can tie tie this whole thing onto a chair. But first I'm going to uh, make sure I have my bow oriented the way I want it. So I think I'm going to put it, hard to tell, the leaves are kind of going sideways. I'm not sure which direction I like it best, but I'm going to put this on here. Oops, can't see. I'm going to put it on top of the swag that I just created out of the picks and florals. And then I'm going to have some ribbon coming up from the top here that I can use to tie it onto the chair. So I'll do that and come right back. So what do you think? Did you like what I came up with for this challenge? I've actually been eyeing these types of swags for some time and I decided given how pretty the Dollar Tree florals were this year and that I had these picks I wasn't using that I would try to create them myself. If you did like it, please give me a big thumbs up and if you're new to my channel, I hope you'll subscribe by clicking the link down below. I post several videos a week on how to creatively manage and decorate your home. So I hope you'll join us in this community. And again, I'd like to thank the DIY Mommy for hosting this challenge. It's really fun to do all of these challenges. I like to participate as well as see what other people come up with. And it also gives an opportunity for new YouTubers like myself to have their videos seen by more people. So if you watch my video, I really appreciate it. And I'd like to thank everyone who did. I look forward to seeing all of you next time. Take care.